Hello, and welcome to another Logic Tutorial, with me, Ed the Shed. My name is Ed, but I'm not a Shed. In this, selection, of videos, I am going to show you many many different ways, in which you can use side chaining, within your projects. Everything in Logic Pro is made to be as easy and efficient as possible, and side chaining is no different. Any plugin, or VST instrument, that can use side chaining, will have a little box in the top right corner. So, if I open up a compressor over here in the inserts, you will see there is a side chain option. There are lots of plugins with this feature, so keep your eyes open, and if you see one, then bloody give it a go, just so you can say, been there, done that, jigger. So, for this particular video, I will show you the most common way, to go about side chaining a housey sort of synth melody. But you can use this technique on anything you like. If you are just experimenting with side chaining, then use sounds, that have a long sustain. This will make it easier for you, to hear the effects of the compressor. Ok so for this example, I have created a housey synth sample. Then, the three tracks underneath it, are my separate drum parts, which I've named. At the moment, there is no side chaining going on whatsoever, so let's have a listen to it before we do anything. Then we can apply some side chaining. Here we go. What the bloody hell? We need some side chaining now. Not tomorrow, not in an hour. Now. Actually, sod that, I need to explain to you what side chaining is doing, before I actually use it. Side chaining, is when you affect the sound of one signal by using another signal to manipulate it or trigger an effect on it. Right. That'll do, let's give it a go. The first thing I need to do, is decide, what I want to use as a trigger signal. The trigger signal will be the one that manipulates the audio. So, in this example I will create a kick track using Ultra Beat. I could just simply make a duplicate of the yellow kick track that I have, and this would work fine. But if you want to have more control over it, which is what I recommend, then you should use MIDI as your trigger, rather than audio. I'll explain the benefits of this as we go along. Ok, so let's open up an instance of Ultra Beat now. I have my own preset that I made which is appropriately set up but I will explain my choices. Notice I have placed a kick on every beat. This is the same sequence as our yellow kick track. So every time a kick plays in ultra beat, I want the synth to get quieter, and then rise back up again before the next kick comes along. This will hopefully give the synth more of a pumping sound. Oons, 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 oons. Big bad boy club rhythms, get me brother. Not me sister. So, let's transfer this pattern onto our arrange window now, and we can do this by, coming all the way down here to this tiny little box, and then clicking and dragging it, onto our arrange window. Now that we have transferred the pattern, we want to clear it from the ultra beat, otherwise it will be doubled up. This is a bit annoying, but all you have to do really is just click and hold on the first kick just like this so that it disappears, and then drag along, to delete the rest. Ok brilliant. We have almost set up our trigger track. All we need to do now, is send our trigger signal to the right place. At the moment the signal is going, straight out to our speakers and we can hear the kick playing. We don't want to hear this kick at all however, we just want to use it as a trigger 
emphasize chaining the synth track. So to do this, let's send the output to a bus, rather than stereo out. I always choose bus 64, which is right down at the bottom of the list. Every time, you create a new send, to a bus, Logic will automatically create a new, appropriately routed, bus channel, just for you. Although this is helpful, we mentioned earlier, that we do not want to hear the kick at all. We just want it to be a trigger signal, so let's delete this new channel in the mixer window. So now, finally, we have our trigger signal routed to bus 64, but we can't actually hear it. Brilliant. The next thing we do now, is go to our synth track, and we open up a compressor. As I mentioned in at the beginning, all plugins that allow side chaining, will have a little box up in the corner that says side chain. So pretty obviously we open this box up and we choose what we want our trigger to be. So in this case we want the trigger to be, bus 64. Now this next part is important and I would suggest you pause the video when instructed, and quickly copy the settings down on your own compressor. The settings you will be copying, will give you a good start off point to work with, when side chaining with this method. Ok, I will now go through the default settings for my side chain and I will explain, what I have done. First of all, I would change the circuit type. Class A, R, and Class A, U, are the most efficient when using this method of side chaining. This is because they both have really quick attack times and they will produce a more intense pumping effect, than the other circuit types. Never forget though, just because I use these circuit types, doesn't mean that the others are not good. It's all just a matter of taste here, so be a boss, and experiment. Ok the next smart thing to do here, is to bring the attack right down to a nice low value. We do this, so that when we come to start tweaking this parameter, we will have a much clearer idea how we are affecting the sound, and it will be much more obvious to your ears. For now, you can leave the release knob, where it is. We can fiddle with this later. Just to very quickly recap on what our attack and release knobs do. Our attack knob is asking us how quickly we want our side chaining to start taking effect after it hears each trigger signal. Our release knob is asking us how long we want it to take for our audio to rise back up to normal level after it hears each trigger signal. Hope. That clears things up a bit for now. The next thing I would normally do is, bring the ratio up to around 7. This ratio setting is a good starting point for you to work with when side chaining. Then, once again, you can mess with this a bit more, later on. Now the last thing I will do, before I take a listen, is bring the threshold down to around minus 35 dB. The threshold slider is basically asking you, how much reduction you want to apply to your audio, when it hears each trigger signal. At this stage, we don't need to mess around with any of the other parameters for now. I would now recommend you, to pause this video and copy the settings that I have just done here. Then you can save the settings and name the preset, side chain. This way you can simply come up here to your presets bar, and choose you side chain start off preset, rather than having to put all those settings in every time. Ok, so now that we have done this let's have a listen to how it sounds. I will start by playing the synth with no side chaining, by starting with the threshold slider right at the top. Then, I will slowly bring the threshold down, until I can find a nice sound. Then you can hear the effect in action. Here we go.
Now, you might have noticed, that as I went further and further down, the pumping effect came in stronger and stronger, but then it started reducing the volume of the audio as a whole. As you bring the threshold down, the real key here, is to find the sweet spot. If the threshold is too high, then you won't hear any pumping, but if the threshold is too low, then you can risk, reducing the volume of the audio as a whole. Let's look at why this happens by opening up my trigger track. As you can see, there is a kick on every beat of each bar. Because I have placed the kicks so close together, Logic's compressors, sadly don't respond quickly enough, when bringing the audio back up to its original level, after each trigger signal. So, if I take every other trigger signal out of the sequence, there will be a bigger gap, between them, as you can see. This gives the compressor more time and space, to react between triggers. So let's see how far we can take the threshold down this time, without it compromising the volume as a whole. Here we go. So this time we are able to bring the threshold down a little bit more without softening the sound, but when it is brought right now it still ends up reducing the volume. This is where the gain parameter comes into play. Sometimes, as you bring the threshold down, you will notice that the pumping effect gets stronger, even though the volume is also getting quieter. If this is the case then why not keep it that way? but just apply a little bit of makeup gain to compensate for the volume you took off. So, to really quickly recap on what we've just done. First of all, we created a trigger track, by creating a kick sequence in Ultra Beat. Then, we transferred our pattern from Ultra Beat onto the Arrange window, and deleted the pattern in our Ultra Beat so that it didn't play twice. Then, we routed the output of this channel to bus 64. At this point a new channel appeared for bus 64, but we didn't want this, so we deleted it. Then, we opened up a compressor on the track we wanted to sidechain, and in the little box in the corner, we selected, bus 64. Now we can load up our sidechain preset that we created and tweak the settings appropriately to our sound. Boom. You just done side chaining. Well done. Just before I let you go, I will quickly show you why MIDI is more appropriate than audio, as a trigger signal. If I open up my trigger track, I can now go to my velocity tool, and change the triggers separately. If I bring the velocity right down so that it is purple, there will be little to no side chaining at all. And if I bring the velocity right up so that it is a red color, the side chaining will be very apparent harsh in comparison. So if you really want to be creative with this method of side chaining, then create a sequence with the velocity levels as well as the positioning of each trigger signal. So, for example, I will make every other trigger signal lower in velocity, like this. Obviously this is a simple pattern, but you can make lengthier sequences that are far more complex, so be creative with this. That is it for this tutorial, look out for my other videos on side chaining, and keep an eye out for new exercises on side chaining, which can be found in the learning environment of my website. Thanks for watching, see you next time.